Hi guys, welcome to another scrapbooking process video. It's been quite a while since I've scrapbooked and it feels good to be back. Thanks to everyone who was, you know, patiently waited for me and um, sent me sweet messages while I was away. I was just focusing on my business for a while. Um, but here I am scrapbooking and I got these socks around Christmas time. They're really super soft socks and I really love socks. So I thought I would scrapbook just as since this is my first page in a while, I thought I would scrapbook about my love of socks simply because it's um, kind of like an easy no brainer kind of topic. It's a little bit light and fluffy. I didn't really want to scrapbook anything too serious or something that I had to think too much about the journaling for, so I thought this was a nice easy one to start with. So I have the IM collection here, which is by Simple Stories. It is from 2015, so I have this entire stash of leftovers in my stash. I bought doubles of almost everything in this collection. Um, I Well, I ended up with doubles because I bought the collection and then I also got pieces of the collection in some kits that I belonged to at the time. I can't remember if I was on the design team for Scraptastic at that point or the Hip Kit Club was um, sponsoring my channel. One or the other, I got a bunch of the IM collection in my kits that month and also I think I got some from Crop and Create that came in the in the kit there and I just ended up with a whole bunch of it for whatever reason and I hung on to all of my extras because I plan to make a little mini album and uh, I'm not doing that today I'm pulling it out because I certainly have more than I need to make a mini album so I'm just looking through and this collection stood out for me for uh, as you can see I've already used a lot of the stickers and a lot of the the pieces are chunked up uh, this collection stood out for me just because it has such a variety of different colors. It has some greens, some pinks, some yellows, and I really like how it's all pulled together with the, the hits of black. And uh, I thought it would pull together all of those mishmashed photos of my socks that I'm scrapbooking here. I, I showed you I printed those up um, using my Epson Picture Mate Charm, which is my 4x6 sized photo printer that I use. And uh, I'm just familiarizing myself with this collection because I haven't looked at it for a while. I haven't scrapbooked in a while, so I haven't looked at anything. Um, as you can see, the chipboard is well used. Both pieces are missing lots and lots of, of the pieces. But I think I have enough here to be able to scrapbook about my socks. So um, I actually went off screen and cut down that box so that I only had the side that has the word socks cut out and I thought that this would make a really good title piece. So I am trimming it down now with my scissors. Um, and I'm not being too, too careful about making it absolutely perfect, but what I'm thinking about doing here is actually cutting those six photos into two strips so that I can put it together and make a photo strip of it. So I'm actually going to, while I've got my trimmer out, this is my Fiskars trimmer, which is available from um, close to my heart. They actually sent it to me. So thank you to them. They have been sending me lots of really wonderful supplies lately, um, lately as in back in August and, and September before I stopped scrapbooking. So I just wanted to show you here in photos, if you have an iPhone in photos, you can search. And I just typed in the word socks. Now I haven't meta tagged, like I haven't tagged or used metadata for any of my photos but my phone just knows that these photos have socks in them isn't that creepy creepy and wonderful at the same time so I um, there were lots of pictures in there that weren't socks there were 256 <laughs> pictures came up some of them were shoes and, and feet um, but uh, it was a nice way for me to get a, a wide variety of pictures of me wearing socks uh, to just document a, over the years all the different times that I took pictures of my feet and I chose photos that just had a variety of different angles and types of socks. And as you can see, I'm thinking about making a photo strip. And here I am trying to decide, do I want it to be a super long photo strip, which is almost 12 inches, which means that it's going to be harder to work with. But it, they ended up just perfectly fitting on a 12 by 12 piece of paper. And even though my initial impression was to not do this, I think I'm going to actually mat the photos on my background paper over to the side like that, just because if if I wanted to do that, it would have been so complicated to figure that out. So I thought I might as well just take advantage of the fact that the photos happen to fall that way. Now off camera, I wrote out all of my journaling because I do plan to type 
onto my background piece of paper, which is not this one actually. The reason I pulled out this white paper is that I was planning to make a little photo strip and cut off both sides and leave a little bit of a white border on the left and on the right of that photo strip. Now here I have also from Close to My Heart, they sent me a ton of really beautiful um, cardstock for scrapbooking with and it really increases my options for my backgrounds which uh, I'm really really grateful for so thank you to them great big thanks to close to my heart um, they sent me these things a very long time ago and so I love this cardstock it's called mint and it's a little bit different than the cardstock that I'm used to using it actually has a white core so it's actually going to be beautiful for tearing although I'm not going to tear it today I'm going to use it as my background as I mentioned so I am just making little pencil lines here because I'm going to run this through my typewriter and most typewriters, I do have an antique typewriter which I adore, but the reason I bought the We Are Memory Keepers uh, Typecast typewriter is that I wanted to be able to type on background paper that is 12 by 12 and most antique typewriters don't allow you to do that. They're just not long enough. The part that feeds the, that you feed the paper into isn't wide enough to fit a 12 by 12 piece. So I haven't used my typewriter in a while and it was covered in dust. So I just dusted it off there with a little brush. And now I'm going to try to get the paper to load. I couldn't get it to load. Um, and basically I'm going to, I googled it and even that didn't really tell, I wasn't doing anything wrong. It just wasn't grabbing the paper. So uh, when I come back, you'll see what I do. I end up basically just like shoving it in and it'll go through and then it wasn't even and it's making marks on my paper, but it's on the back. The front where you're going to see my typing isn't happening. So as you can see, I just basically pushed it in without even using the round knobs, but then once it's in, then you can use the round knobs. Now I'm moving my margin. This is my little thing that, that controls how far over the roller goes when I push it. So you see it's only going over to the halfway point, which is exactly where I needed it to go. It's a little bit not far enough, but that's okay. I, I can work with it. So I will read you my um, journaling as I type it out. And I also controlled the left, the sorry, the right side margin as well. So that the, the basically that tells you when the that controls when the bell is going to ring that tells you to skip down to the next line so my journaling says there was a time when i really disliked wearing socks and would go barefoot around the house um, all winter long and long for summer when I could wear sandals and go barefoot outside as well while i do still love sandals i've come to really love cozy socks in the winter i've even joined a sock of the month club for a short time. I just love the casual cozy feel of soft cotton on my feet. Socks make my feet feel amazing, whether they are being attacked by kittens, carrying me around all day, or kicked up relaxing. Nothing beats a great pair of socks. That is what my journaling says. And that just kind of pulls in some of the things that are captured in the photos. So I do have a photo of a cat playing with my feet and pictures of me on my feet and also pictures of my feet kind of up in the air as I'm relaxing. So, or just kind of like up on a, on a, on a table. It's not very relaxing to sit with your feet up in the air. So I'm just taking a white eraser to gently erase my pencil marks that I used as guides to know where I needed my journaling to go. I wasn't too sure how vertically long my, my journaling would be, so I didn't exactly know where to space it, but I just took my best shot and I'm pleased with how it turned out. I like that it's more up to the top than it is to the bottom. Now I'm just using my ATG here to uh, tape these down to adhere them so that it looks like a photo strip. And now most of the time that I'm going to spend scrapbooking this project is going to involve backing these hollow letters with uh, different kinds of pattern paper. So I'm going to take my Fiskars rotary trimmer and uh, just trim off the top because I want this a little bit smaller now that I know where my typing is and where my photos are. I need to make this the right size so it fits in the space between those two things. And this is my this is what I can change. So once the journaling is down, I can't change that. And the photos are the size that they are. So this is something that's easy to trim down to fit to size. I am leaving the little phrases above and below the word socks 
one of them says the one below says one size fits most and I just think that's kind of cute so I'm going to leave that but then the one that says five pairs of cozy socks I'm going to uh, cover that up with some pattern paper at some point so now I'm just picking out what patterns I'd like to use here and as I pick the patterns as you can see this collection has tons of different patterns and variations on the same patterns in it and so the things I'm thinking about here is I want a variation of colors. I definitely want something dark, like either the black or that really dark gray pattern that's coming up. And I want each of the patterns to be different from the other. So I need to have five different patterns. So I, I started by choosing this floral. That was an easy ch choice because it has some of the green, some of the pink and some of the yellow that I'd like to have show up in my page. Now I am going to, it, w one thing that I was saying, I, I have a real time version of this page on my Patreon account. And uh, one thing that I was saying to my patrons who were kind of following along live with this, not live, but kind of real time, is that uh, this has enough dimension because it's the, the word socks, that, that piece of packaging is actually made out of a thin chipboard. It's actually like a thin corrugated cardboard that's about the size of a very thick chipboard. Um, it has enough dimension by itself, but I wanted to cast even more of a shadow between the letters and my background pattern paper. So I am going to use a whole lot of foam tape here. Now you could use foam tape that you tear off. It might be more economical if you have a roll of that great big giant scotch tape. Uh, scotch foam tape that is that might be a more economical way of doing this but I just like the convenience of using these dimensional adhesive from Stampin' Up it's my very favorite dimensional adhesive of all time and uh, so one thing that I do to make it a little bit more economical is I do cut them in half just to allow me to um, it helps me to fit the foam in the places that I need it to fit but it also spreads out the foam and allows me to use fewer fewer pieces. So I just zoomed in here a little bit. Sorry, a little bit of it is off screen. That's one of the, the hazards of zooming in is that you don't realize you're out of frame. But uh, just to let you see how I'm maybe going a little bit overboard, but I just don't want when this is in my album for it to smush down and, um, you know, not be as dimensional as I wanted it to be. So I do have two different size of pop dots here. I have the dimensional adhesive in the regular sized hexagons by Stampin' Up! And I also have the little teeny tiny ones, which are newer. And they're a little bit trickier to work with just because they're really sticky. But that's the, I do like both of those sizes of, of dimensional adhesive. So I just went ahead and put those dimensional adhesives over all around all of the letters rather than going letter by letter. I thought it would be a more pleasant experience to me to get all of the um, dimensional adhesive on there at once. So there I go with my S all backed in pattern paper. And now at this point, I'm going to decide to, instead of doing um, all of them kind of one by one and deciding as I go, I'm going to actually kind of pre-cut. I'm going to select all of my pattern papers ahead of time just so that I can know how they're how they're laying and how they're going to look together before I go ahead and adhere them all down. I knew I wanted that heart shaped pattern paper to be in the O because that's the biggest space and I like that pattern the most of all the patterns I'm using. And now I have the C and I'm thinking I'd like maybe a like a geometric shape for there but I couldn't find one in this collection. I didn't want to go into my stash and like go through my scraps or anything like that and so I just decided to use this it's kind of a floral kind of a graphic kind of whatever you call that like fleur de lis or something like that I like that pattern and it works well I did go with polka dots on the K I went with it because I really liked that it wasn't black but it was dark enough to be to give me a little bit of contrast in this I, I, I like how unexpected that K is relative to the other letters so I wanted to use that uh, my hesitancy around using a polka dot is that the background of this piece is polka dot and I didn't want to overdo it with the polka dots but I think it looks okay like that I'm just kind of sizing them up I really wish that I had shifted my camera a little bit here um, probably part of being out of practice is what happened there 
although I do this all the time anyways. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say just a thank you to you guys for um, remaining interested in my channel even when I wasn't producing very much. Thanks to all of my viewers who checked in with me. I am I was fine. I was just really, really busy uh, with my business. And um, to thank you guys for watching this video and for, um, you know, hanging out with me for this time. I really appreciate it. So there we go. I like how that looks. Now I'm going to add some outlining here. I'm, I'm putting three dots and then an outline all the way around. And then I'll put another three dots where the outlining connects to the photos at the top. And what this does is it basically balances out this layout has a lot of darkness over on the far left hand side. And so I just want to extend some of that darkness by drawing some lines around the outside of the page. Now I am also going to outline around the outsides of these letters. As you can see, you'll be able to see when it's done. It really does emphasize the letters. It helps the letters stand out and pop. It makes it more obvious that this is my title. And it, it, it just gives the the title a little bit more substance. It also pulls some more darkness into the uh, page. As I said, I'm using black as my accent here to provide some contrast in the page. Gives it a little bit more presence. Now when you're outlining on this kind of, a, this is kind of like a, a matte substance but it's got a sheen to it and so I am using a permanent marker. It's a Lumo color, uh, a Stettler Lumo color marker which is my favorite uh, brand of marker so I use these for any kind of slick surface writing that I do where I need a permanent marker you could also use a fine point sharpie or a, an American craft slick writer although I never find that the American craft slick writers ever last very long I don't really like those markers very much they dry out for me so see how that just gives the title a little bit more emphasis and it also gives it this nice casual handmade look to it as well now I'm just thinking about what strip am I going to use to cover up that title that says five pairs of everyday cozy socks. And I'm looking at the strips on the bottoms of the, like the manufacturer strips at the bottom, and they have little samplings of strips of the pattern paper that show up in the collection. And I really like this. It's like a, an airmail, but it's yellow, it's yellow or golden colored instead of being red and black or red and blue. I really like it a lot. So I'm going to, uh, cut it down. Use This is my Stampin' Up! trimmer. You really don't need this many trimmers. I know I've kind of a lot of trimmers show up in this video. Um, you really don't need this many trimmers. I've been scrapbooking for a really long time and yeah over the years I've just bought a lot of trimmers. I find that my rotary trimmer by Fiskars is really great for, for trimming up um, anything thick and dimensional and I also it's my longest the, the trimmer that I've had the longest, so I'm better able to figure out where it's going to cut. So that's why I sometimes pull that one out. But my Stampin' Up! one is so lightweight and I keep it right by my right arm. So it's easy for me to just grab it and use it. So that's why it, it, if I don't have a reason to pick another trimmer, I'll pick my Stampin' Up! trimmer because I, it's light and easy to use in a video. So uh, there we go. That that strip does a pretty good job once I cut it down a couple of times. <laughs> does a pretty good job of covering up that title. But I feel like it it's, looks kind of lonely up there. So I'm going to think about what else. I, I'm thinking maybe some washi tape, maybe adding another pattern paper. And then I ended up going with the idea of using this black upholstery thread. This is Coates Extra Strong Upholstery Thread in Black and I find this a really great staple for my scrap room because the thread is quite a bit sturdier than regular thread that you would you sew with and it has more presence on your page. It's also stiff and has these really nice curvy lines to it because it's on a spool. So you'll see when I, when I tie the bow it stays bow shaped which would not happen with regular thread. It's a little bit hard for me to do this here. Um, I'm not the greatest with thread and strings and tying bows and stuff so I had put some adhesive on the back to keep the thread in place and then I would and then I needed to kind of move it around after all because I wanted the bow to show up between the K and the S. So there see how that's a really loopy bow 
it wouldn't be if I had used regular thread. It would be kind of like all messy all over the place. And I'm trying to think, I want a strip of paper there, but I don't want my airmail stripes to go two different directions. It's just my own thing. It's not wrong to put airmail strips in two different directions. I just find that I always don't like that. So, I'm, <laughs> or usually I don't like that. So I'm not going to use that strip there. And I'm thinking about using this strip right here. I like how it has black on it as well as that kind of dirty white. And I like how subtle that's going to be. I don't want to introduce anything too much here. And I feel like that just kind of caps off, but I'm, I'm, I'm almost feeling like it's a little bit too linear now. We've got that strip of photos and then the big rectangle with the word socks in it. And I just feel like maybe I need something softer there. I'm going to look through the embellishments and immediately noticed this banner thing. And uh, it's made out of the chipboard from the collection and I really like it, it looks good there. So I'm gonna use that to kind of cap off my journaling. And it gives me an opportunity to basically, I don't wanna to put too much embellishing on this because the title is, is embellished enough and the photos are really really busy because there's six photos all in a row like that and, and the photos themselves are pretty busy so I grabbed a couple of tiny little chipboard phrases that I really love I picked the ones that say simply me enough and thankful and put them in various places on the photos and that three gives me some repetition throughout the throughout the page and they do have adhesive on them, like they're stickers. I'm just making that simply me extend out of the boundary of the photo a little bit. And then enough, I'm putting on the Lego game there just to cover it up a little bit and gives it a place to live. And then thankful, you can't see where I put it, but you'll see it at the end or at some point. I don't want the chipboard banner to go under the word socks too much because it will create too much um, dimension because that title is already fairly dimensional. The chipboard piece, although it does have adhesive on it, it is a little bit warped because it's quite a large piece, so it's cupped and I needed to use liquid adhesive. I used my Tombow Mono Multi Adhesive, which is super strong and it gives me a really nice hold. I just had to press it down and at first I thought, oh, this is going to be so boring, but it didn't take too long for it to take hold at all. And uh, I was just chatting with my patrons while I did that or chatting to them because w I wasn't live streaming while I did this. And so that's looking good. It's not entirely dry, but it's dry enough that it's sticky and it'll hold while I put the rest of the page together. So I'm just using ATG on the back of that socks piece and uh, placing it relative to my photo and the banner so that it fills that space. And right now uh, there's, as you can see, lots and lots of items over on the right, the left-hand side of the page. So I need to put something up in the top right-hand corner just to anchor things and balance out the page a little bit. And I found this little sticker that says, I am going places. And I thought I might use another sticker here from the sticker set that's that's plain it's like a plain tab and I thought I'd put in my socks so it could say I am going places in my socks or in my socks I am going places and I decided to just stick the sticker right on to the rubber roller part of my typewriter and uh, because it's not terribly sticky, I knew that I could tear it off. If you had a super sticky sticker, I wouldn't want to do this because you might run the risk of making that roller thing gunked up and that would not be good. But uh, I was familiar. If, if your sticker was too sticky, I would just you know rub it on your jeans or sweater or something to uh, get it less tacky. Not rub it, but just kind of like pat it on your, on your clothing. So I layered those two more for design. I think I would have preferred it to say, I am going places in my socks, but from a design perspective, it looked better like this. So I put it the other way. It's just a little um, accent piece, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And now I'm thinking about what else I might want to do with this. And I need some dimension up here in the top part. So I'm going to use this. This is a fancy pants little piece of chipboard from that little card of embellishments there. And and uh, it, it kind of gives me a third heart up there and it also gives some, some dimension. 
I grabbed my enamel dots, which I store in this little drawer and I don't have them sorted by color or anything. I'd like to do that one day is just cut these all into little color strips and sort them by color, but uh, I haven't done that yet. And I may never do it, but we'll see. And I'd like to just put a couple of enamel dots here and there, but I, I want to be adding mostly texture in the form of like just a little bit of shine. I don't want to add color. So I'm, I'm using monochromatic. So I'm putting two green enamel dots on the green hearts. And then I'm going to put two yellow enamel dots on that yellow piece of the banner there. And then the only place that I'm using enamel dots for color contrast is up here in the top corner. I added a black enamel dot to that yellow chipboard heart. And that just adds a little bit of black up there for contrast and to carry the black that's elsewhere in the page up to there. Now I put my enamel dots away before I was able to realize that I wanted two of those yellows so now I'm searching for the same yellow I couldn't find it they I think I only had that yellow in that one size and I wanted a smaller one so I just grabbed one that was a similar color it's not a, an exact match but it is close enough so thought for a second I might add some thread up there but decided against it this is a very unembellished layout and I'm feeling like I like it. It's a nice jumping off point for me having not scrapbooked for a while and rather than mess around with figuring out what else to put on it I'm just going to leave it as it is. My final touch will be some splatter in black and for this I'm going to use I'm kind of thinking about what I'm going to use here. I'm going to use Studio Calico Skyscraper Mr. Huey's and I'm just splattering it with the little nozzle that's in the jar. And just gonna put some up in the top corner like that and some down in this area as well. Now that wasn't quite enough. The, the splatters were too small there. So I'm going to put some more on down here. There we go, that's better. Just adds a little bit of interest and keeps it from looking quite so plain and, and, um, and plain. <clears throat> This large white thing is a tri art. Wait, wait, what is it called? A tri art palette. I it, I got it at my local art store, and uh, it's great for splatters and mixed media and so on. We'll call this one done. If you're new to my channel and want to see more, please subscribe as I will be posting more layouts, although I'm not sure of the frequency. If you're not new to my channel, well, thank you for your patience and for popping back in to see me today. Uh, moving forward, and for the past year or so, actually, all of my layouts are here on YouTube. So I do have a Patreon account, but the only new content that I post is real-time versions of my process videos that are all already here on YouTube. Um, so for the past year or so, my Patreon has been a way for viewers to support me with a small tip as opposed to a membership in exchange for exclusive content. So if you like these process videos and are not interested in giving a tip, which is totally okay, uh, you're not missing out on anything by just watching my YouTube channel. Thanks, and I appreciate your views and your likes and your comments and all that goodness. If you do want to leave a small tip, just hop on over to the Patreon account that's listed in the information section and also on the screen here. As a thank you for your support, you'll have access to real-time versions of my process videos, and you'll also have access to all the previous content on my Patreon from over a year ago when I was creating uh, exclusive content. And you'll there you'll find dozens of exclusive process videos and classes and archived live streams and lots of other good stuff. So for a very small donation as low was one dollar you will get um, access to lots of pro of content although the new content will be limited to just real-time versions of the process videos that you can find on my channel so I hope that that clarifies any questions that people may have had about my patreon versus my YouTube um, thanks so much for checking out this video and have a really great scrappy week